from Las Vegas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Interconnect 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now your host, John Furry and Dave Vellante. Hi everyone, welcome back to uh, Las Vegas. We're live here at IBM Interconnect 2016, day two of exclusive coverage from SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier with my host Dave Vellante. Dave, day two of three days of coverage, uh, day one in the books, day two, more cloud, more infrastructure, more Watson, um, a lot of stuff happening. What's your thoughts from day one and what's your view on day two? Got a lot of great people coming on The Cube. Uh, the biggest names in tech here at IBM. What's your, what's your thoughts? Well, watching the keynotes uh, this morning on IBM Go, and it's all, it's all about the developer. I mean, you remember, John, we were here two years ago at, at IBM Interconnect when IBM announced Bluemix, and you know, it was a good concept, it was kind of a shell, and now, as I said yesterday, IBM's on that flywheel. Essentially, what they're doing is they're building out a digital strategy uh, or a strategy that allows their customers to, to build a digital strategy, build digital assets, and take them to market and allow their customers to consume them, interact on mobile, et cetera. And what IBM is doing with Bluemix is building services in that are essentially facilitating that transformation for customers. So that's what it's all about. It's interesting, you're not hearing a lot about, we heard a little bit yesterday from Robert LeBlanc about cheap storage and cheap compute. That's not what the cloud is to IBM. It's all about this digital transformation. So you totally different messaging, which is typical of IBM. Well, first order of business, uh, Dave Kinney, who's now running Watson from the Weather Company, um, he said on, on stage, very, as a matter of fact, very direct, he said, first order of business is developers. That is the theme, Dave, I agree. And, but the IBM has to follow through on this. I mean, their narrative is right on, it hangs together. I think they're taking a good approach, and I think that uh, IBM is not behind in this. They see companies like Twitter who blew the developer opportunity. Obviously, they have a deal with Twitter, so that's probably obvious to them. They understand yeah, that. That's not the playbook, is your point, though, It's not right? the playbook. You've got to embrace the developer community, one. Two, they actually have so much experience in open source, they're on their, some will argue, multiple generations of open source uh, DNA within the company, yet they're you know, transforming. So you've got this open source ethos, okay, embedded in the roots of IBM. Okay, now there's organizational challenges, but you're seeing Blue Mix really move faster than I thought thought it was, I thought it would be slower along than it is, they're working hard. They have to follow through on open source and do it right for this new generation. They have to make the developer top priority because look at the bottom line, we talk to customers all the time. There's not enough people in the enterprises that actually can do the development. So anything to make the developer's life easier, the mobile developers, is key. And this Lego blocks open source build on other people's stuff, it's great. If you're, going to build a, if you're going to build a building, you don't need to be in the concrete business to lay a foundation down. Watson can help there. This is their opportunity, in my opinion, and I hope they don't blow it. So I want to get your take on something. So we have put forth this premise. You know, we talk about this digital fabric all the time, these horizontal transports like the cloud, there's a data transport, et cetera. One of those transports that we talk about is the identity transport. So you saw today there was news. MasterCard is now accepting fingerprints and selfies, and selfies right? So what you, one of the things that we predicted and you're seeing now happen is that increasingly organizations are going to use external services to provide things like identity, the data platform, obviously that's happening with the cloud. I want to get your take on that, you know, that, that news generally and, and specifically you know, what you see happening in the business. Well, there's a complete infrastructure transformation going on with the cloud. You're seeing little things from content management systems, APIification is changing old stuff. Email marketing doesn't work anymore. I mean, it does work technically, but it's not the preferred user experience. So a lot of this infrastructure, software and infrastructure is radically shifting to the preferred new user experience. Okay, and one of them is, you know, federated identity, but not federated by any one vendor. Open source will be a leader there. So what I see happening, the Apple left back door with the, with the uh, terrorists, uh, MasterCard will accept selfies and fingerprints as access, is an absolute new paradigm in identity. And companies used to have federated identity across their systems and now are changing it. For instance, people want their own identity. We do it on CrowdChat, you can do it with OAuth, but IBM also has interesting opportunities with their own identity systems. So you can't, it's not a winner take all in identity. I think a new paradigm is coming out. You're seeing things like fingerprints, you're seeing biometrics, you're seeing <laughs> selfies. There is a new way of identity, and I think no one's cracked the code on that, and cloud exposes the opportunity, but also exposes the weakness. So, in an era of social, in an era of push notifications, 
A lot of stuff's certainly changing. Identity is a huge issue. This is absolutely directly related to security. This is the subtext of this event, Dave. So at the Uber level, John, I think this is profound, and here's why I say that is, this is our industry has really only been through, previous to this current one, two, two major shifts. The move from vertical integration to sort of horizontal competition. Essentially, that's been in place now since, you know, the, the mid-90s, early, early 90s even. When IBM decided way back when to go for it in, in services, um, that was, you know, a winning strategy. Frankly, it's trivial compared to the transformation that's happening now. It's radical, in, Dave. In the Dave it's, I mean, I'm so it's so obvious. But I'll use some examples today, just today. Not have to go look any farther than this morning. Top news in technology industry globally today are a few stories. I'll highlight a few to make my point. One, the government is putting pressure on Apple to backdoor 12 iPhones. Okay, that is a huge thing. Apple's putting that heat shield down. No, no, we're not going to create a backdoor. Huge implications on policy security. Uh, two, MasterCard's accepting selfies and fingerprints from people for access to content and identity. And three, Uber driver killed five to 15 people in, in Michigan. Okay, all three are related to around one core issue. Who the hell is that person that killed the people, the Uber driver? That should have been using big data analytics to predict that. You have the MasterCard identity issue. That's going to be a new form of identity. And obviously the Apple backdoor is a security issue. All revolves around cloud, security, identity. It's all software. And all this stuff about Watson analytics, emotions, you know, how people feel is trivial compared to what is actually happening in the industry. So the opportunity is going to be for the big guys to do well and startups to fill well, so the gaps. The, the, the point I wanted to make was in terms of the industry structure. And so what's happening is, 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 as we talked about, these horizontal platforms, these horizontal layers, if you will, whether it's cloud, security, identity, the data transport, are supporting what used to be vertical industry structures, where the value chain of that industry was, was you know, hardened in cement. That's blowing away. Why is it being blown away? Is because people are digitizing everything. They're digitizing the assets, which allows them to sort of jump those industry you know, swim lanes. Yeah, I mean, this is the guy and from the see. predictive analytics. Alchemy is now part of the formula, but we've been saying on the cube, and we continue to bang on this term, you've got to be horizontally scalable with data and now technology, whether that's open source, industry standard uh, hardware, okay, horizontally scalable works, but also you can develop a pre-packaged vertically integrated apps on top of it. It's not the stovepipe of the past where here's my silo, here's my app, that's my, uh, uh, retail app, and oh, by the way, I had a different app for back end. No, the data modeling is causing a horizontal integration plus vertical integration. This creates a huge challenge, huge opportunity at well, the same time. And, and so, I mean, this, again, this is a trivial example, but if you look at the mini computer business in, in the 80s, it died because those guys failed to respond to the, to the trend toward disintegration. And, and what's going to happen now is I think you're going to see similarly, some of these industries are not going to respond to the digital transformation imperative, and they're going to get blown away. You know, IDC put out a number I heard this morning in the keynotes that one third of the, the you know, leaders are going to get disrupted. I think it's much higher than yeah. that. And so that industry structure, the, the way you structure and organize an organization is, is table stakes, but it's, it's vitally important. Yeah. And I think that's what, Ginny has been spending a lot of time on. Now, to, to me, John, the big challenge is the inertia of IBM's huge fragmented software hey, it's business. Great point. The, fra the fragmented software business is something that I think is a challenge for IBM that they've got to address. Well, there's two things. You hit a nail on the head. IBM's got structural challenges in how they've organized. They've got zillion CTOs. They're working on that, right? And they're working on that. But this is not the issue. The issue is the person who has to implement the solutions, the, the doer, the, the practitioner who's sitting there going, wow, I have an opportunity. I got, I got risk in my business. I got to actually build out these horizontally scalable applications. There's no playbook. And so what yeah. has to happen right now is to mitigate the risk and take advantage of the, of the financial opportunity, a person in a company says, hey, I got a meeting next week at offsite. I got to present the, not the five-year plan, the one-year plan, how I'm going to move from point A to point B for our business, not the vendors, not the company. So all that kind of ties together because how do I implement the solution? How do I learn? Where are my peer groups? Where's the best practices? I got to buy research from Gartner? I mean, so, it just doesn't work. I mean, this is the whole thing. The content is going to be free. The community has to come together. And the issue is on the customer side. IBM's customers are the ones that are feeling the pain. So IBM's got to move their organization in a position to be more agile, 
okay, and to meet the demands of those folks building the next generation architecture. Well, and I think you're going to see huge demand for how do I do that? Like you said, there is no playbook, so. All right, we are day two kickoff. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Uh, we go out to the, to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Check out Cube Gems. Go to Twitter and search hashtag Cube Gems. We are taking all the little highlights from the, these interviews, putting them up out on the web very fast, in real time, sharing the social content. Go to siliconangle.tv. And remember, March Madness is coming up, and of course we have the companion Cube Madness, where all the guests bracket up and fight for who's going to be the most influential guest, and of course it becomes a hackathon because they all stuff the balance. So join <laughs> Cube Madness at siliconangle.tv. We'll be right back for day two after this short break.